Welcome everyone. We're here with Dr. Verlander today to talk about well child visits and I'm going to ask him to introduce himself. Hi, uh, I'm Dr. Sean Verlander. Uh, I am a pediatrician who works in the primary care clinic at Valley Medical Center's Covington Primary Care Clinic. What are well child visits? Uh, a well child visit is a visit in a primary care clinic uh, where a child is seen uh, so that we can assess growth, uh, development, uh, any concerns that the family may have. Um, a physical examination occurs when vital signs are taken um, and in general the uh, overall health of a, of a child is assessed. Um, oftentimes this will also include things like vaccinations uh, or screening tests depending on um, the patient and other risk factors that may be involved. Why are well child visits important? Well, I think it's important to make sure that a, that a child is healthy. Uh, we want to uh, be able to provide some reassurance that um, something is okay, um, but we also want to be there to, to help look into something if, uh, if there is a concern that merits um, further investigation. You know, for example, if there's a history of diabetes in the family um, and um, it's warranted based on, on the child's health, um, ordering a, a test to screen for diabetes is, is perfectly reasonable um, to help uh, reassure the family that uh, everything is going okay. What is the recommended frequency for well child visits? So well child visits early on because there's a lot of growth and development that occurs in the early ages uh, occurs a little bit more frequently. Um, in kids under the age of 18 months it's about every two to three months uh, and then it spaces out a little bit. So kids two and up is typically about once a year although some providers will see a child uh, for a two and a half year well check um, but typically about once a year for kids over the age of two. What are some important milestones and age-appropriate considerations that providers look at in well-child visits? Um, in general, we, uh, with the younger babies, we see big bright smiles around two months of age, um, babbling and cooing around four months, rolling over at six months. By 12 months, we're on average seeing first steps taken and, and first words, um, and the vocabulary tends to expand from there. Um, Two-year-olds really are working on fine motor skills, um, and being able to stack blocks on top of other blocks and walking upstairs, um, and uh, three and four-year-olds just kind of build on all of those uh, gross motor, fine motor, and uh, social emotional skills. Um, in our our school-aged children, we see um, a lot of um, learning how to coexist uh, in a world that's outside the home. So um, learning at school, but also um, uh, social development to, to interact with others and um, uh, hopefully grow to be um, healthy functioning adults. During the pandemic, some kids weren't able to get their scheduled vaccinations, particularly kids who are ages 11 through 12. What recommendations do you have for parents and caregivers about that? Well, I think we were put in a bit of a hard situation. Obviously, COVID is a serious public health threat, um, but uh, we realized relatively early on in the pandemic that uh, ignoring other aspects of, uh, of a child's health is not great. Um, so um, we um, did took great pride in um, building a, a, a clinic um, from a policy standpoint uh, that allowed us to uh, see patients safely. Um, really since June of 2020, we've been seeing um, all, all ages for preventive care and well visits. Um, and what we've noticed is that there's been a decline in the uh, vaccination rates for things like a uh, tetanus booster, which typically is given at the age 11 visit, um, but also other uh, vaccines as well. And so uh, we're really trying to put the focus on getting kids caught up and getting them the, the necessary vaccines to um, protect them as much as possible. Can well child visits be done by telehealth? It's, it's, it's an excellent question because well child visits 
you know, th there are some aspects that can be done through telehealth. You can certainly talk about um, any concerns that a family may have about a child. You can have some limited physical examination. I've had a lot of luck with um, uh, parents who have um, really nice cameras on their phones, for example, to show me some rashes. Um, but there are other aspects that, that certainly uh, can't be replicated. So things like, um, uh, you know, listening to hearts and lungs or um, uh, doing uh, measuring a blood pressure on a on a patient uh, who you're worried might have a uh, might have a problem with high blood pressure, um, and then there's yeah there's vaccinations and if there's any screening tests you know if I wanted to check uh, somebody's blood cell counts or or uh, screen for diabetes or high cholesterol that would require being uh, there in person to have the blood drawn. So um, while telehealth is a really great asset, um, there are certainly limitations when it comes to well child visits. What types of providers can do well child visits? Um, so well child visits typically are handled by um, uh, folks in pediatrics and in family medicine. Um, uh, classically that's been doctors, you know, people with MDs or DOs behind their names, but um, more and more we're seeing um, advanced practice providers, uh, people like nurse practitioners and physician assistants um, who have training in um, taking care of pediatric patients who are able to um, uh, see uh, kids for, for their well child visits as well. And what other recommendations do you have for families on helping to keep their kids healthy? I mean, I, I think that it's just really important to recognize that uh, uh, having a healthy, well-developing child, um, it, it takes a community. It takes um, a, a parent, uh, two parents. It takes uh, extended family members. It takes uh, the medical team to, to make sure and provide some reassurance uh, when reassurance is necessary uh, and further investigation when, when it's warranted. I always like to tell families that uh, I like to address something when it's a molehill and uh, before it becomes a mountain. Um, but uh, that's kind of what preventive care is all about. Okay, thank you Dr. Verlander for joining us today. And for those of you watching, you're welcome to read the details in the video to learn more about the clinic and other services that Valley offers.